Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us this evening or whenever you're watching this. Um, my name is Pastor Hannah. Super excited that you're here. Um, in case you don't know who I am, you stumbled across our YouTube channel or something along the lines of that. I'm the youth pastor here on staff at Temple First Church the Nazarene. And I'm going to do a recap and dive in a little bit deeper to what we talked about on Sunday, which was um, kind of this idea that, that whenever we have a fresh start, kind of this past Sunday was our back to school Sunday. And so kind of talking about a fresh start and God is calling us to lead a life that um, is good and that reflects his image. And so um, I'm going to talk a little bit tonight about why we might be more hesitant to do that, right? So my, why we might be hesitant to, to want to lead this life that God has called us to live. Um, and there are a few reasons why we don't lead the life that God, God has called us to. And um, first, though, I, I want to kind of set the expectation because you might hear these words. God has called me to live this life. Okay, well, what does that mean? What, what does it look like to live this life that God has called us to? So I want to set a little bit of... Um, the stage, right? I want to set the expectations for what that looks like because if we don't know what we're shooting for, if we don't know what we're trying to do or how we're trying to live, then it's going to be a little bit hard to do that. So I'm going to set some expectations for you guys. Um, as you might ask, how does God call us to live? How has God called us to live? And what does that practically look like? Um, so we have this calling um, to be holy as God is holy. And this verse comes in the book of Leviticus in chapter 19. Um, actually, I think it's mentioned once before in chapter 11, but I will be talking about chapter 19. Um, but, but there's this call to be holy. Now, if you ever hear any, anybody being a holiness denomination, okay, because we are a Nazarene denomination and, and we are a holiness denomination, right? If you know anything about the Church of the Nazarene, you know our theme song is holiness unto the Lord, right? Because we believe that we can live a life that is holy and a life that reflects the image of God. And the reason why we believe that is because God sent Jesus, his son, to come down and show us how it's done, right? Jesus lived this perfect life. And so Jesus lived this life that really showed how to live and be holy as God is holy. Now, am I ever gonna be as holy as Jesus and as perfect for as long? No, probably not, because um, I've already lost out. I've sinned in my life already, so Jesus has already got a one-up on me. But it's just this encouragement that we can live this life that resists tempta temptation and that we can um, live a life that that um, people will look at us and know something different. And we say, they say, what is that? I'm like, well, it's Christ, you know, I'm trying, trying to live like Christ. And so that's kind of this idea of, of be holy as God is holy. And, and again, this get, we get this calling in Leviticus 19. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. And we also get this calling later because sometimes it's hard to differentiate what we kept from the Old Testament while we've taken into the New Testament um, with, with the law and the new covenant that comes through Christ, right? But even in 1 Peter, we have this calling to be holy as Christ is holy. And so we know that this call to holiness um, is still there, still present in our life. Um, but in, in Leviticus, God goes on to describe how holiness is to be carried out through living. And that is through obeying what he then lays out as what we call the Ten Commandments. Um, does anybody remember what those are? Don't worry if you don't, because I'm going to read them to you. All right, number one. God says, don't have any other gods before me. Number two, don't have any idols. Number three, don't take the name of the Lord in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Number five, honor your mother and your father. Number six, don't kill. Number seven, don't commit adultery. Eight, don't steal. Nine, don't lie. And ten, do not covet. Now, I tell my students all the time that this probably feels a lot like God just gives a list of don'ts. And it's not like that's not what's happening here, but there's 
a whole lot more that's happening here. It's not just this list of don't do this because I want your life to be miserable, right? That's not, that's not God's intention. But really, when God gives us this list of commandments, it's to set the parameters of guidelines that help us live a good and holy life. Because let's be honest, no one wins whenever we break any of those commandments, right? No one's going to win whenever we lie or we cheat or we steal or we covet. There's a loser in every single one of those scenarios if we're disobedient. And I challenge my students by asking this, how can we love our neighbor if we're offending them? How do we love our neighbor if we're choosing ourselves over somebody else and living this really big ball of selfishness, right? But by obeying these commandments, this leads us into living as holy people, set apart by God. So we're starting to get a glimpse of God, but, but some, sometimes we might want to ask, how do we really know who God is? Well, in one way, it's really simple, and that's to read God's Word. And God's Word is the Bible. Now, I would venture to say most of us can read, and if you cannot... I want you to know that there are audio versions of the Bible available um, where you can listen to what God is, um, what, what you can listen to the Bible, you can listen to the text, you can listen to the scripture. And if you have trouble reading, um, whether you've never learned or if your eyesight's bad and you're not really good at any of that stuff now, please, please come find me. Please let me know. I'll, I'd love to help you um, find the resource that helps you dig deeper. Um, into God's Word because they have, they have audio versions of the Bible where you can listen to it. Um, and so if you don't know that that's an option but you're really interested in it, please come let me know and I would love to help you um, dig deeper into God's Word um, through, through an audio version. That's okay. Um, but we read God's Word or, or we listen to it because the Bible is the story of God redeeming God's people. That, that's the gist of it, right? And, and God's people, that's us. That's you and me right? Over and over and over again, we see God be faithful and rescue and redeem God's people. Now, it's not because God purposely, like, did something horrible to God's people that said, you need to be saved, right? It's because God's people always continuously choose these selfish ways and these sinful ways where God's like, don't do that. And they're like, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that, you know? And so then they suffer their own consequences. And God's like, Okay, well, I don't want you to suffer forever. Here, I'm going to help you out. So, so we see God redeem God's people over and over and over again. And so we know that God loves us. And we know because the Bible is thick and dense and there's a lot of words in it. There's a lot of stories. Um, and it's really cool. And when you think about it, it's, God's story is still happening with us today. We just don't have it in the Bible, right? But, but there have been times where I've messed up and God's redeemed me in my situations, you know? But, but we know that God does not give up on us. Over and over and over again, we see that in Scripture. Even to the very end, through the book of Revelation, we see God is on a mission still to redeem His people. All right? So that's a really, really neat way to get to know God. And, and you know, we have these other ways that we can learn and get to know God better. And we call these spiritual disciplines. Okay? Now, reading the Bible is one of, one of them. Um, another one is praying. Okay, now prayer can be as simple or complex as you want to be. If you are just starting out in prayer, I'd recommend setting a timer for like 30 seconds. And, and you can pray, um, you know, say something, thanks God for doing this in my life. I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. Lord, this is um, what I want to pray about. I, I, you know, I need help with this. Someone needs help with something. You, you pray and, and ask for help. And then you say, but Lord, ultimately I, I want what is your will. And not mine and so we, we constantly yield to God's will will and so um, we want to make sure that we um, do that but sometimes that that sounds I, I'm a, it might be a lot um, to for your first prayer but prayers don't always have to be so complex um, you know we had a speaker last Sunday and he was talking about this ministry that he was involved with with in this guy was his name Noah um, that he was that he was praying for and Noah said, hey, man, I just really need you to pray. And so this, this, uh, this awesome guy, um, Les, he, he said, I prayed this prayer. And I said, God, help Noah. That was his prayer. So sweet, so simple. Three words. Sometimes, sometimes when we're experiencing really, really great moments, 
or even really, really deep moments of grief or anything along those lines. Sometimes words aren't even necessary. You just, just thank God, just be in this moment with me. And then, and then that's a good moment of prayer, all right? So pr prayer is a really, really good thing because communication is key in a relationship. So um, it helps to pray. And, and maybe you don't like to pray out loud. Maybe you don't like to use your words verbally. Um, and you're, not, you're bad at thinking of words in your head. I know some people's brains work different. Um, journaling is a great is a great thing to do. Um, or, if, or if you feel like you get really distracted and you need help with prayer, um, you know, maybe you, you'll be praying and you, your brain goes off on a tangent. Just jot down what, oh, I need to go grocery shopping. Okay, here's what I need to do. Put that aside, get back to your prayer. That's okay. God is more patient than we sometimes probably give God credit for. God will wait for you if you have to get aside your, your distractions, right? So another one is a spiritual discipline is attending church, okay? And I have a friend that says that you can be a Christian and not go to church, but you cannot be a growing Christian um, and not go to church. And that's just this really big emphasis on how important our Christian community is. We see this beautiful image of community with Acts 2, the, the early church. We see an image of God's people and community. God rescues from the very beginning God's people, the Israelites whole group of people, community, set apart to be God's people. And so we know community is important. So going to church is important. And, and another reason we see that is because we serve a triune God, right? We have God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, separate but one. This is, this is the image of the Trinity. So God is constantly in holy community. Um, and God wants us to experience that as well. All right, and then there's worship. That's a spiritual discipline. If you if you feel like you want to get to know God or, or pray to God through worship songs or anything like that, that is absolutely allowed. Um, and there's so many things that are there. So so get creative with it if you want. But but those are some simple spiritual disciplines um, that that just about any of us want to do. All right, but sometimes we want to do things and then we don't, um, and we want to live a life well and and we want to live a holy life, but but something stops us from doing this. And a lot of these things I call excuses. And, um, you know, I've, I've made plenty of my own excuses in my life. And this past Sunday, we kind of talked about um, Moses and, the, and his story and his calling. And so God calls Moses and he says, hey, Moses, I want you to go into Egypt and I want you to bring my people out of Egypt. Um, they've been in slavery. Pharaoh's got a hold of them, and I want you, my guy, to go in there and get them out. And Moses is like, I'm a shepherd. I don't know what on my resume made you think I was about to go approach Pharaoh and his his whole, um, you know, army or whatever else is going to be there. God, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. And so God's like, well, you can trust me. I want you to go to go do that, you know? So Moses is like, well, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God says, oh, don't worry, Moses, I will be with you. I will I will lead you, I will guide you. Um, it's, it's gonna be great. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you're gonna know that you've been successful because you're gonna worship God on this very mountain. You're gonna be right back here worshiping me with God's people. And Moses says, well, what if I go to, go to the Israelites and I say, hey, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, well, what's his name? And Moses is like, God, what should I call you? God said, well, I am who I am. So this is what you're supposed to say to them. Just say, I am has sent me to you. And I talked about, you know, thanks to many seasons that come from people um, that didn't have faith right away, we have a full scripture, God's, the Bible, the so many people in there um, had, had, did not have the faith immediately, you know, to just say, okay, God, let's go, let's do it. Um, and I think we can all resonate with them because there have been times where God calls us to do something and we're like, mm, I don't know, I don't know about that, God, because there's this, this, that, and the other. And so um, Moses didn't really have a, a big frame of reference of story of God's faithfulness so far. And so He's, he's pretty nervous, pretty worried. Um, but, but God says, just say, I am has sent me. He said, well, what if they don't believe that, God? What if, what if they say, God didn't really appear to you? And so God's like, don't worry. 
take the staff, you'll be able to perform signs with it, it's gonna be great. I just wanna show you that I am who I am. I am who I say I am. But that's still not good enough for Moses. And he says, hey, God, I'm not very good at talking. I don't know how you want me to sweet talk Pharaoh uh, into, into letting all of the Israelites go. That's a lot of people that he's just gonna say, yeah, go walk free, go ahead, take them. I don't need them. No, Pharaoh's not gonna say that. And so, so I, I can't even, I'm not gonna be able to, to charm him with my words to, to get it to work. And so, cause God says, hey, who made your mouth? I made, I made your mouth, so, sorry. <laughs> um, so why don't you just trust me and it's gonna be okay. And, and don't worry, you'll, you'll speak fine, I got gotcha. you. And Moses finally caves and he says, God, please just send someone else. And God is really gracious and God says, well, what about your brother, Aaron? He's pretty good at talking, why don't you take him with you? So Aaron ends up becoming this companion in this huge narrative of the story of the beginning of God's people. And so um, it launches again this narrative of God walking with his people throughout the scriptures and, and God being faithful and, and forgiving them and redeeming them over and over and over again. And so we tie this into the idea of us having a fresh start because Moses was about to go give all of the people of Israel a fresh start. And God has called us to be bold. God has called us to be bold and walk with him in this calling that he's placed in our life to be holy people. And there's a thousand excuses for why we don't want to live our lives that way. Why we don't want to lead our lives in the way that God has called us to. And um, I'm going to share again with you guys a list of excuses that I offered. Because um, I've offered these excuses to God throughout my time as a Christian. Because um, sometimes I also don't want to listen to what God is calling me to. So here is a list of excuses that I've given to God. God, I don't have time to read my Bible. I'm just too busy hanging out on social media. You know, God, I don't want to be called a ministry because that means I'm people are going to judge me more harshly. I'm going to be um, held to a higher standard, and I think I'd rather just be average. I just want people to not notice me, and I want to do my own thing. You know, God, I don't want to go to church. I'm really tired. I stayed up too late last night. You know, whether it was work or video games, I'd rather sleep in. God, I don't want to give you a chance to be a part of my life because if I do, that means that I'm gonna have to forgive people because I hear about your forgiving and I know that I'm supposed to forgive and I don't really want to do that. And I'm gonna have to have a good attitude about it. I, that's not for me, you know? God, I don't want to pray before I eat in public. That's embarrassing. God, I don't want my friends to know I'm a Christian because they'll make fun of me. God, I don't want to go to the altar because people will see me as I go down and they're gonna come up with a thousand different stories about why I'm there. God, I don't want to be a leader because what if I fail? What if people leave a ministry or the church because of something I said? And this leads me to our first question of the night. Sorry it took us a minute to get here. It was a big setup. Um, but my first question that I want to ask you guys is this. Do you have any excuses that you use to keep from doing what God has called us to do? Right, so, so do you have any excuses that you offer to God to say, God, I, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to live the way you've, you've, you've called me to live um, because of this, that, the other. I mean, you guys take a few minutes and discuss this question with your group. Um, and remember, this is a safe space to do that. So take, take this minute, a uh, few minutes, and discuss that.
So we've gone over the reason that we might not live a life that God has called us to because of excuses. Um, but there's another really big one that I can think of um, that may lead us to not want to live the life that God, God has called us to, and that is rooted in trust issues. Okay, now not a lot of us want to admit that we have trust issues, um, but I'll share a quick um, story about myself um, with trust issues that I had with God. Um, I won't go into detail. This isn't stuff I like to talk about on like a public platform, especially um, even on a personal level. Not usually my topic of conversation. Um, but I think it's really important that we share what God has done for us. So um, whenever I was younger, whenever I was a teenager, I had um, some big trust issues with God. And that stemmed ultimately from trust issues that I had with father figures in my life. And so I hear this this language of like, well, God is our heavenly father. I'm like, well, I don't like my dads, so no thanks, Lord. And um, a lot of that stemmed from different things that, that maybe you guys have in your story. Um, you know, my, my biological dad, um, bless his heart, I love my dad so much. Um, so I want to pre preface the story with the fact that I were good. Um, but he, my dad, was a, was a businessman, and so he spent a lot of my childhood really focusing on the business, and so that led to some, like, um, not as much emotional support as I wanted from my dad. And so my kid and teenager mindset took that in, in some way of, of neglect, and now that I know my dad more and and just really understand him like I can look back and see how well my dad loved me um, it was just a lot more through um, the gift of provision and so um, my dad totally provided for me and like it's all good now but but whenever I was growing up I had that issue and so that carried over into what I felt about God the father right and then I had another father figure my stepdad and he was just, he was abusive in a lot of ways. And so that led to me having mistrust for God the Father because, well, if, if one dad makes me feel this way, the other one hurts me, well then what am I supposed to take from that, right? How am I supposed to trust that this God, my heavenly Father, is supposed to love me? And I'll, I'll give you, um, I'll give you the, the answer now in case you're battling with that or struggling with that, is that God is the father that we deserve, right? God is the father that we need. God is the perfect father, right? God isn't the one that's gonna let us down in our own mind, even even if if we think it, you know, sometimes we come to recognize, well, God, you're actually there for me, right? Because that's kind of the story with my dad. But then sometimes um, we just have to say, God, you're not gonna hurt me. You're not gonna, you're not gonna do things um, out of spite for me. You're going to do things because you love me. And so um, that was a piece of my story. And I was able to learn how to trust God. Whenever I was um, around 15, I really surrendered my life to the Lord. And I said, God, I will give you one more chance. And if you mess it up, I am, I'm going to walk away. And I'm never going to come back. And uh, God is so faithful. And God did not mess it up. And so I have been able to um, get to know God as, as my father and build on that trust and say, God, I trust you. And I trust, I trust what you have for my life. And I trust that you have called me to live this way because it's good for me. And so... Um, you know, after I trusted God, I started, I started living for God, truly. You know, I was in the Word, I prayed, I went to church, I checked off all of the items. Um, and then God called me to ministry. And I had to question my trust, do I trust God enough to really live my life all the way for God? You know, and um, you know, this story was riddled with with things where I was like, God, I need you to prove that you're there. I need you to show me, like punch me in the face with this calling because I really need some affirmation, especially, you know, this call to ministry. In case you guys don't know, um, I, I have a call to cross-cultural ministry. I'd love to live abroad one day. And 
and serve the church in that capacity. And so like, I'm think I'm getting this calling on my life and I'm like, God, like, I don't wanna leave my family forever. What do you mean? I don't, I don't know if I trust you that much. And so just through, through prayer and, and through God affirming me, like I accepted that call and um, I've never regretted it. You know, I've, I've never regretted following the Lord and trusting God. Trusting God as my father, right? And because um, I know I know God loves me, and I know God has good things for me, and so I had to come, overcome a lot of trust issues with God to be able to fully surrender everything about my life, and to come to the place where I said, "Okay, God, wherever you lead me, I'll go." So, you know, some of these points might resonate with some of you that are listening. Maybe you currently have or in the past have had trust issues with God. And that leads me to my next question is this, what trust issues do you have with God? Now please know, again, your group is a safe place to share if you wanna share, but if you're not ready to share these thoughts out loud just yet, take this time to listen to others or take this time to just sit in prayer or silence and just Silently say, God, these are the issues I have. Um, so I'm gonna, I want to invite you guys to take the next few minutes to do that. Thanks for allowing me to be a little bit more vulnerable than usual here. Um, again, that's not something I super like to talk about. Um, but I can understand that a lot of us might have trust issues with God. And so I, I don't want you guys to, to not grow and to not live a holy life um, because because of trust issues. And so go ahead and take this, take the next few minutes to, to talk about that. Well, we have gone a bit deep tonight by airing out our excuses and our trust issues that we have between us and God. Um, and I hope it was helpful to recognize and perhaps even verbalize some of these things in your groups or on your own, in your own prayer with God. And as we move forward from tonight, I wanna to encourage you to grow in the Lord, continue to grow towards this life of holiness that we're called to and continue to grow in this life um, where we get to trust God. And you know, on Sunday I talked about how we can measure our success in this. And 
that is by asking the Holy Spirit to help us produce the fruits of the Spirit um, in our lives. And here's what it says in Galatians chapter 5. It's going to go over the fruits of the Spirit. And I want you guys to pay attention to what these are. I'm going to ask you a question about it, so pay attention. Um, Galatians chapter 5 says this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So here's my last question for you guys. What fruit of the Spirit do you produce well? And what fruit of the Spirit do you need to work on? Go ahead, take the next few minutes and discuss that. Now myself, I think I need to work on my everlasting fountain of patience because sometimes it is a bit dry and runs out before I realize it. And you know, I don't mean that I just lose my patience and, and snap or anything like that, but I think I'm always moving so quickly or I'm so busy with something else that I forget to be a patient listener or forget to be patient during times that are tough and maybe I don't wanna learn some virtue through it. I just wanna get it over with. Or sometimes I don't want to be be patient in prayer and I want God to answer me right then and there but just like with me with you God is faithful and God will help us grow and produce the fruits of the Spirit that we are lacking and God will continue to grow and nurture the fruits that we are producing so well we just have to be willing to grow and that looks like setting aside our excuses and that looks like setting aside our trust issues and we have to at some point just jump in, jump all in and, and say, God, I want what you have for me. And you have to say to yourself, God's got me and it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna pray us out, but I wanna leave you with a challenge this week, okay? Because I, I like to know that whenever we learn something, we can somehow put it into practice, right? So whether you ask someone in your group tonight or you just make it a note to yourself to call or text a certain person this week, 
I want you to share with someone during this week, right, between now and, and next time you watch the midweek corker video, whenever that is for you, when you showed, I want you to share when you showed the fruit of the Spirit that you said you needed to work on, right? Maybe you share how you trusted God for peace instead of being anxious. Maybe you share with someone a story this week whenever you show more patience than normal, right? Because it takes intentionality. It takes, for real, it takes discipline, that spiritual discipline I was telling you guys about. It takes intentionality to allow God to work in our lives and to chisel away the things that aren't of God and to mold us into God's image. And that looks like producing the fruit of the Spirit. And that's hard work. Okay? It's not something that, that is just easily done every, every day. Sometimes it's a challenge. And so whenever you are challenged, decide now that you're going to show that fruit of the Spirit. But it takes intentionality to allow God to work on our lives. So let's share with each other this week, as this week goes on, the fruit of the Spirit that God produces in our lives. So as you leave, as, as maybe as I'm, well, maybe not as I'm praying, but as you leave, decide who you're going to share a moment of your growth with. All right, so with that being said, um, I'm going to pray us out. So here we go. Lord, I want to thank you for today. I thank you for the ways that you've called us um, to be your people. Thank you for the ways that you have equipped us to be your people. And Lord, I pray that you would help us as we set aside our excuses, as we set aside our trust issues, um, to be the holy people that you've called us to be. I pray that you would bless us with recognition of growth as we work on the fruits of the Spirit that we're not super great at producing. I pray that you would bless us with celebration recognition whenever we do things well and, and whenever we, we live the way that you've called us to live and that we would have people to celebrate that with. You know, Lord, that's the reason why we have uh, the body of Christ. The reason why we have the church is, is to celebrate um, how we reflect your image together. So I pray that you would give us opportunities to share that with each other this week. And um, God, I pray that you'd bless those here that are watching, that are listening. Um, be with them in whatever situations they're going through. Um, bless them. And, and Lord, would you reaffirm to them your presence in their lives. Thank you so much, Lord. We love you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you. Um, thank you for, for taking the opportunity to be vulnerable with one another tonight. Um, I know it's not always easy to do that. And sorry if I challenged you right out of your comfort zone. Um, but sometimes, you know, we got to get a little bit uncomfortable to grow. So anyway... Um, I love you guys. I hope you have a great week, and we will see you on Sunday. If you're watching this before the 21st, um, we have Dr. Johnson, who's our district superintendent, will be sharing with us this Sunday. Um, really excited with that, and then I will also be doing your core group video next week, so I will see you again soon. I hope you guys have a great night, and we'll see you later. Bye!